What's up, YouTubers? It's your boy, your boy, and today we're going to be doing a video on pufferfish facts and information. Please enjoy. To begin this video, we have the Porcupine pufferfish. This pufferfish can get up, up to 12 inches, and when scared, it will deflate itself into a spiky ball of needles. And for the rest of these puffers, it will be practically the same thing. Although they do have different colors, um, they do puff up the same to where the, it's just their stomach that gets big, whereas with the previous porcupine puffer, the whole body gets big. Alright, and now for this section, this will be the brackish fish section. The first one you're going to see is the orange saddle puffer fish. These guys, actually all these guys are in a salinity of 1.004. And that pretty much means it's a mix of salt water and just regular fresh water. Um, the green spotted puffer is the puffer that I already have. And that is seen in my previous videos. So if you like, you can go check those out. And then also I have the figure eight puffer, which is generally housed with the figure, the green spotted puffer. And then there's also the red eye puffer. And this one's kind of interesting because it does, I believe it does originate from the Amazons. So kind of an And here we have the king of all of the pufferfish, for this is the MBU, which is known to be the largest pufferfish, as far as freshwater in the world, for it grows to a good two feet. And next we have the second largest puffer, which would be the Fajaca puffer. This one is actually the second largest freshwater, for it grows to 17 inches approximately, which is just over a foot. This is the golden puffer. There are two different types. For the other one is salt water, and it actually is quite bigger. And an interesting fact is that these guys will actually change color as they grow up from juvenile to adulthood. This next one is called the dragon puffer, or also known as the humpback puffer, for the back is pretty crooked, as you can see. This is actually the puffer I want to get next, but it is quite expensive due to where it's found. Um, and the next one is the pea puffer, which I already have. The maximum size is an inch. And it actually is in my tank. I just haven't got in a video of it yet, which I will release soon. The pufferfish's teeth is much like the parrotfish, which is kind of formed like a beak to make it very strong. But it is kind of like a rat's teeth where it never stops growing. Due to this, they need to gnaw on hard things constantly, so that's why they will chew on corn. So the general lifespan for pufferfish is usually about 10 years. The longest would be 20, but on average 10, if not 15 years. The max size it will get honestly depends on the puffer you get. The biggest one, which is the MBU, that one gets to about two, if not longer, like two feet for sure. The smallest one would be the P puffer, and that gets the longest an inch. Um, the salinity levels, it all, all depends, whereas fresh water, you just get tap water, then um, clear it up with the Aquafina water purifier, or the water conditioner, I should say. And... Um, Tank size, it really just depends, but generally, you got, it's got to be over 75 gallons. Fish that are like 6 inches go in 75, but if they go to about a foot, then it'd be 175, definitely. Salinity-wise, that one was brought up before, but for brackish water, it's a bit different because it is a mixture of both fresh water and salt water. 
So it's got to be a specific gravity, kind of depending on what kind of fish. But with a um, spotted green puffer and the figure eight, their preferred salinity is 1.004. And then as far as diet goes, there will be another slide about that because it is quite special and it does have a variety. Look at this dude. Look at his hair. <laughs> oh my goodness. So then this first predator will actually be the mantis shrimp, and it's got this name due to the long arms and hooks that resemble the praying mantis. This shrimp is quite fast and actually will attack any kind of fish, but... These next two will be the lizard fish and tiger shark, but these two are actually unique because they have grown to adapt and eat the puffer fish, for when they eat them, they don't have the side effects of death because they are immune to the toxin. The next predator is the octopus. Now these guys are quite intelligent and not many have made it out with a puffer due to the spikes, but they generally will try to get them with the tentacles. You won't really miss me way bad then girl, so how about now? Cut them up right now. Yo, what's up right now? Yo, what's up right now? So it's about time for the final predator on this list, which would be the moray eel. The interesting fact about these guys is, is that they actually have a second set of jaws beyond their first jaws. So the first jaws, which is the one you see, like, them just biting, and the second will actually come out from their throat and drag the prey in further down their throat. The opponent of the toxin that is in this is called tetrodotoxin. Uh, the effects of it are... It blocks the transmission of signals from the nerves to the muscles, so it pretty much has muscle spasms and it also causes the muscles to stop moving or paralysis and also weakens the muscles very, very quickly and also messes with the respiratory tract, which is your breathing, so that can lead to respiratory arrest, kind of like an asthma attack, and eventually death. And the pufferfish, depending on what kinds, they have enough toxin to kill 30 grown men. And if you are wondering if there are other fish that carry this toxin, there actually are. The two other known ones are the ocean sunfish and the triggerfish. And the triggerfish actually has a beak-like mouth, just like the puffer as well. Congratulations, you have reached the end of this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to watch out for my other videos.